we now have all these equations that govern the dynamics of some simple continuous systems. We are in a rather simple framework with systems that are of dimension 1 and that are unbound. And the equations are linear because you only considered small motions. The question now is, how do those systems move? Let us consider the simplest one, the tension cable here. The equation is so simple with a second order derivative in time and a second order derivative in space. To make it even simpler, I can divide by the mass per unit length, m, and define a quantity c as square root of t over m. We will also use from now on a simple notation for the derivatives. A dot means d over dt, and a prime means d over dx. The equation becomes y double dot minus c square y second equals zero. This is often called the wave equation. But it is a bit inappropriate to say this, because at this stage, we don't see any waves in it. Moreover, there are plenty other equations that will give us waves. So let us just call it the tension cable equation. What are the solutions of this equation? How does a tension cable move? we have a very strong result, which is that the solution y of x and t will always be in the form of the sum of two functions, f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. You can easily check this yourself by putting y into the equation or by using x plus ct and x minus ct as new variables. This is much simpler because f and g are just functions of one variable each. We shall call this the d'Alembert solution. D'Alembert was a French mathematician, physicist, philosopher in the 18th century. Thanks, d'Alembert, for that solution. A brilliant idea. <laughs>to see what happens after an initial deformation of the cable, say, a shape y0 of x here. This means that y of x times t equals 0 equals y0 of x. I also need to give a condition on the velocity of the cable. For instance, no velocity, y0 equals 0. Can I solve the equation? For this, I need to find f and g. So using the initial conditions, I have y of x and 0, which is f of x plus g of x, equals y0. And y dot of x and 0, which is minus c f prime plus c g prime, equals 0. From this, you get that f and g equals one half of the initial condition y0. I know my functions f and g, which means that I know y for all space and time. y of x and t equals one half of f of x minus ct plus g of x plus ct. What does this look like? Here it is. The initial shape splits in two halves that go in opposite directions corresponding to f and g. These two shapes stay undeformed. Why? Because they are always made with the same functions, f and g, and that changing time is just like changing the x-coordinate. The shape at a given time t is found somewhere else at a later time. We have a wave propagation. What is the velocity of the propagation? It is the quantity c, the same in both directions. There is a special case of particular interest, that of a harmonic deformation. Imagine that the initial deformation is just sinusoidal in space, y cos kx. The quantity k here is called the wave number. Using the solution we just derived, we know what will happen. The displacement will be the sum of two waves, y equals one half of y cos k x minus ct, plus y cos k x plus ct. 
But this is also equal to y cos kx times cos kct. This means that the initial shape oscillates. The two waves that go in opposite directions result in this oscillation. And there is a relation between the wave number k and the frequency of the oscillation, omega equals kc. In other terms, there is a direct relation between the wavelengths of the sinus shape, lambda, and the period of oscillation, t equals lambda over c. I can also go the other way and ask, what is the shape phi of x that oscillates at a frequency omega? By including such a displacement in the equation for the cable, I have omega square phi cos omega t plus c square phi second cos omega t equals zero. The solution for phi is a sinusoidal shape of wave number equals omega over c. This is the same oscillating solution, of course. No surprise. More generally, I can look for solutions y of the form of the real part of e to the i chi x minus omega t. Using the cable equation, I get omega square minus c square k square equals zero. This is the relation that connects the harmonic temporal variations defined by the frequency omega with the harmonic spatial variations defined by the wave number k. This is called the dispersion relation d of omega k. It is somehow the equivalent in the harmonic space, omega k, of the original equation in the xt physical space. In xt, the physical space, we had a dynamic equation with partial derivatives. In omega k, the harmonic space, we have a dispersion relation, which is quite simple. Both are equivalent. The left one has a D'Alembert solution with two waves, a right and a left one. The right one has two k for each omega, or two omega for each k, one positive and one negative corresponding to the two directions. Let us summarize. We have very simple solutions for the tension cable. They are always the sum of two waves going in opposite directions. The velocity of the waves is c. The waves are undeformed. The quantity c is also the ratio between the frequencies and the wave numbers, or equivalently, the wavelengths and periods of oscillations. We have here what is called non-dispersive waves. There is no dispersion of the quantities. Actually, space and time are somehow equivalent in their role. They just differ by this constant, c, the wave velocity. This is not a surprise. The equation contains second order derivatives in time, and second order in space also. But we have other systems that have the same kind of equations for fluids. What happens for them? Let us see that next. Mm -hmm.